Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sunrise Daily. I'm Chen Berlin Usal. I'm Kaido Kikiolu. And I'm Ayo Makide. Welcome to the show. Well, yes, indeed. We continue to keep tabs and do what we can to ensure we slow the spread. That's the reason why those states are on lockdown. But at the moment, 23 new cases. That's what the NCDC is highlighting. That's at 8 p.m. on the 1st of April. Uh, now we do have 174 confirmed cases of COVID-19 reported in Nigeria. But good to see that uh, the green bar, the second component there, which happens to be the nine have been discharged with, unfortunately, uh, two deaths recorded. Mm, absolutely. And it's good to have that particular green bar because at some point we, ha we had just the yellow and red. Right. People were saying, no, we need to see some hope. So it's good to have it back. But if you see, yesterday we recorded 35 cases, 12 in the morning, then uh, this, the, the latest one, 23 much yeah. later. So that's like the highest spike in a day. So are we going to be seeing spikes? So there you see across the states, just to give you a breakdown. Lagos still leads on that infamous uh, list with 91 cases, the Commissioner of Health tried to make some clarification, but yeah, 91 cases in Lagos. The FCT second with 35. And take a look at that. Oshu has actually overtaken Oyo State. Remember, Oyo used to be third on that list, but now Oshu has 14 cases. And uh, it's uh, instrumental. If you pay attention, you see that Akwaibom has five. Hitherto, Akwaibom wasn't on the list at all. And to now begin your fight against this pandemic with five cases, all cases, all states, all territories it had to begin with one per time and then build on that. But then I don't know how Akwai Bomb is going to handle that five cases well, at a time. It, it's important for us also, perhaps if it will help, how did they arrive at five? What, what, I know there's some backstory about some of these things, mm -hmm. you know, we, uh, some reports that, uh, you know, preceded uh, this announcement, how there were five of them. So they need to find out who are this. Well, you can't say their names quite all right, but um, how did they arrive at this? We do know that yesterday, while uh, the briefing was going on in Abuja, they did talk about uh, what happened in Oshun, those who came through the borders, yeah. and then eventually got down there. So you could see why uh, they were giving reasons as to how they're dissuading people from mm -hmm. taking certain actions, because those actions have got repercussions. Uh, the resultant effect, not exactly good. But then, uh, in spite of the lockdown in some of these states, how do persons find themselves in a quiet bomb state? Mm -hmm. And then you unfortunately have this case. So now they have to know how to conduct themselves and take it a lot more seriously because certain steps that were taken before now, you may have wondered that maybe they'll need to, you know, look back now and take, take a look at what did we do previously? What did we get right? But of course, they know how they need to conduct themselves moving forward with... Mm -hmm. Uh, those five new cases, as it were. And talking about people conducting themselves, it is um, interesting to note that there are areas in Nigeria, you know, uh, from even what the uh, national coordinator of the COVID-19 presidential task force mentioned yesterday, that there are people in certain areas who are not paying attention to some of the reg re regulations that various government agencies at the federal and state levels uh, are making. They, to many of them, this is not true. It mm -hmm. doesn't exist. It's, and consequently, anyone who doesn't, if you don't believe a thing, you are very, very vulnerable you know, to it. And that's what has been happening, so to speak. Uh, we, we have reports of some people in Ikorodu. We have reports of some people in the, somewhere in the north. We've also had reports of uh, some people in certain other parts of even Lagos. Uh, just yesterday, we understand and that uh, some uh, members, government officials who are trying to enforce this lockdown in certain areas went into a mosque, I think, Moshalashi Alaji or something, and they were said to have been resisted by the, the worshippers in the, in, the, in the mosque. And even though they were trying to find out from whoever was the leader of the team and all of that, and then they were pushed back, you know, so to speak. So uh, with that kind of conduct, Definitely, the fears of such spikes cannot be... Uh, Honestly, I, I think a lot of people need to perhaps understand what is at stake here. So we have 12 states and the FCT uh, 
that have recorded cases yeah. in the country at this point. But here's the tricky part. The NCDC DG said, you know what, we're trying to contact trace about 5,000 people. Mm -hmm. That, that mm -hmm. might not really hit home. I mean, 5,000, when you have a population of 200 million people, you think, man, that's not a big deal. But if you know how many people just one person yeah. can spread it to over a few generations. Now, when I mean generations, I don't mean the you know, 100 year generation. It's the spreading cycle. If you know mm. how many one how many people just a person can spread it to, then 5,000 can easily just you know, do well for 200 million people. So if we understand what's at stake here, then I think we'll need to, a lot of people would you know, perhaps attack this mm. in a much more serious way. We've seen videos online about some young people trying to resist you know, some task force officials in some state. It's understandable that people are saying, well, there is, we don't have food. It's, it's understandable. but. This is a time where we have to really be focused on the big picture here. The big picture is curbing this pandemic. We don't, if you know what the WHO and other countries are saying about Africa, how they fear that with the weak system, health system that Africa has, then this can easily just wipe out a large chunk of the population in Africa. And I think a lot of people will pay more attention to this. This is a real fight right here. And speaking about videos that have been seen, uh, yes, we do know that they'll be di distributing relief materials to different people who try to get them. But some of those images, when you see how uh, the coordination is being done, they just may need to improve upon some of those. And so um, they need to ensure that they also maintain the distance. Uh, well, this is not what you want to see. Uh, much as, yes, it's not a bad thing that the authorities want to provide these packages, but um, perhaps in terms of organization and communication to the people, they need to know. And mm. there are wonders. Uh, they, I know they also said yesterday they need to break those messages down to languages mm. so the people can understand the important essence of what really is going on. And then when you look at this, boy. This is not what you want to see, honestly. But we'd expect that before this, that there should have been proper arrangements in place. Before the truck even gets to that location, there should have been, you know, points marked out on the floor saying everybody should stand here. We can only take about 20 people per line. I know that it might be difficult at this time, but we have to do what is right. Yeah. We shouldn't allow the solution to now be worse than the disease itself. Because if someone was actually infected there, and I mean, you saw what happened then, there's a danger that that person could have infected other people with the whole scoffling and all that. So it's important for us to, while trying to solve this, not create a bigger problem on our hands, really. Yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll take a look at how the dailies are keeping tabs on developments across the country, perhaps the world, in a moment. Let's take you through some of the dailies. We start with Vanguard newspaper this morning. Coronavirus positive man escapes from isolation center. Yeah, you're shocked, aren't you? Commercial driver escapes isolation center in Bida. Declared wanted. So, this speaks to a lot of things. The impression they have about what's going on, the knowledge they have about the disease, what they think that uh, the authorities are trying to achieve, how the authorities are carrying out this uh, uh, confinement or, or quarantine, as it were. And then... Is that bidder in Niger State? Yeah, that's what, that's what it uh, reads, yeah. It says, Cote d'Ivoire returnee sneaks out, returns to isolation center in Oshun. So you need to find out. So where did he sneak out to? I hope he didn't go to a party. To get some air, maybe. Because they'll the, 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 the talk about somebody sneaking out to go for a party. And then, are people still organizing parties? No way. So, um, well, that's just to let you know you need to go get the story and read it. <laughs> Nine more cases in Oshun. Nationwide total, now 174. Then, 2,000 tested so far. Oshun Major governors meet to consider palliatives. So that you see there, um, yeah, that's what you find. And then if we ask people to stay at home, we must make them comfortable. As a scrap to Badger, as a speaker of the house, uh, as a while there. Lockdown, policemen harassing our members in Lagos, say NMA Medical Guild. How in the world? Well, 
And then uh, COVID-19, Obaseki invokes act to lock down Edo. They have several uh, other stories associated with that there. Uh, then you can always take a look at uh, different scenarios uh, on the back page of Vanguard Sports. Uh, greatest Nigerian footballer, Shorumu disagrees with Amokachi on Mikel as Lawal lectures him. Uh, Moses Simon splashes 2 million naira on fans to help fight COVID-19. Yeah, we need all the help we can get. And, uh, Perhaps you also need to find out if the money has hit the accounts, uh, the COVID-19 accounts, so that uh, they can indeed begin to deploy because we need to test tests and conduct more tests because that's one of the ways that you could get a lot of people <coughs> treated mm -hmm. and attended to because if people are asymptomatic, uh, people have the symptoms, or if people have it and like they don't know or they're not exhibiting any symptoms, it's dangerous. So they need to know, so we know. Uh, because after two weeks, mm. we don't know what's going to happen. Absolutely. Second or third instance. So, um, look, it's going to be huge, really. Honestly. Yeah. Really and that's huge. why the WHO keeps saying, test, test, test. 2,000 tests, huge. man. We, we have a more. long way to go. We need more. Well, let's take a look at the Nigerian Tribune this morning. The big story is on COVID-19. FG releases over 30 new rules to shape lockdown yeah there was a need for some clarification so the task force came out to say well this this and this 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 is but you know what you find it on page two of the nigerian <laughs> tribune don't let me get into that it says over 2000 tested so far markets to open four hours daily in lagos ogun abuja you know some of the clarifications that were made yesterday because you, you see some people selling food who are actually being harassed and i'm thinking Food is essential. That's like one of the most important <laughs> things at this but time. I hope they also do, they're aware of that timing now. Exactly. Because now that uh, it's out there, the, the uh, PTF did say that yesterday, 10 to 2, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We hope that when people now want to go do that, the, the security agencies won't say, well, where are you all going? You know, so... So they need to get this memo too, apparently. <laughs> Let it go around. I mean, they I said that much yesterday. Mm. Lockdown for elections mm. is different from lockdown for this kind of scenario. So mm. the actions can be one track, one dimensional. It can't be. It's not martial law. But you, but you see that yeah. picture on the front page that shows the progression of coronavirus cases in Nigeria. And if you, you're a lover of graphs, you don't, you don't love this particular graph because you see it increasing. You see the bars they're going up. So have we gotten to that tipping point yet? Maybe not. Have we started to flatten the curve? We don't know, but we do hope for the very best this morning. And there's a breakdown of the cases right next to that. See this one right under that big picture. Questions in Oyo as Oshun records positive cases from Abidjan returnees. I know that Oshun and Oyo are neighbors. So their big question is on page five. Attempts by returnees to leave isolation center in Ejibo foiled. Why? Why? Are you trying to leave the isolation so, center? You know, that then raises more questions concerning those who are supposed to be on self-isolation. Mm -hmm. Now, you could imagine if anyone uh, at the lower end of that did call the NCDC office and then they tell them self-isolate for a certain number of time. And then, you know, the, the, the capacity to supervise self-isolation isn't there at the mm -hmm. moment. So there will be more questions as to how are they supervising? How are people who are in self-isolation coordinating themselves? So, there you go. Well, there's a statement from the governor of Oyo State saying total lockdown, our last option. Yeah, there's been so much talk about that total lockdown in Oyo State. But the governor says, well, that's, that's our last option for now. And you see WHO saying 5,406 cases of COVID-19 in Africa. And I really don't want us to uh, just relax at this time. Say, no, it's just 5,000. If you look to Europe, you see so many cases. But this is not a time to relax because Africa... I tell you, should not be having this kind of figure. But let's uh, look at some other stories. Presidency mocks showing car over stance against lockdown. It's on page three. You know, seeing that particular statement raises so much questions. And Ondo explosion. I didn't know I was carrying explosives. That's coming from the driver of that truck. It's on page 25. <laughs> and this sad one at this time, really. Gunmen kill three, injure seven. In Plateau, it's on page 26. Uh, just one more. Banks, others donate 15 billion naira to CBN COVID fund. 
And speaking about banks, what is this thing that we see circulating about cash? Uh, big checks. Bank, checks being uh, saying, is it circular from CBN? Or yeah, we need to find out what really is going on. Yeah, someone small. was worried. Don't honor checks. Yeah, someone was worried saying, why? do this at the end of the month when <laughs> some of us are going to need to clear checks but uh, we ensure we, we we hope that the cbn is putting all that yeah but no matter the concerns they have i mean as genuine or depends on what the concerns are really but why do they have to wait if if that's the case till when people will need it mm. because look what's wrong with giving people prior notice and say look this is what we're thinking as a result of this risks or this analogy we think that this check should not be honored so Make your plans early yeah. if you do have it. So it's really, uh, I don't know. Well, to, to also add to that, you've, you remember that to a large extent, CBN had been doing all they can to discourage checks, uh, cash. cash right. in yeah, but conditional but cash transfer is cash. <laughs> They're handing out cash. What is CBN saying about that? Wait, wait, wait a minute. What should we call that policy somersault? <laughs> is it con <laughs> will it change into what conditional electronic transfer? <laughs> it's conditional cash transfer. They're handing cash to people. Isn't that what? Or, unless I'm missing something. Well, we hope no. the cash is disinfected. How do you know that? Oh, that's that's the standard practice, I guess. Oh really? But hey, let's take a look at the Guardian. Okay, yes, the Guardian newspaper leads with, of course, COVID-19 story. COVID-19 cases hit 174 despite 50 measures by presidency. Nigerian Tribune said 30 measures. Uh, Guardian is calling it 50 measures by the presidency. You may want to find out the details on the inside pages. 4,655 exposed persons still untested, says NCDC boss. I remember, you know, hearing that there was some scaling up that this week will be testing minimum 1,000 um, persons for COVID-19. Then let's see how it goes in due course. Presidential Task Force unveils protocol for lockdown policy. You want to find out the details. In the Guardian newspaper this morning, story continues on page six. Right under that picture, marketers give terms for selling petrol at 123 Naira 50 Kaba. Give term. Well, maybe they'll give me the terms to an NPC, not to Nigerians. But do Nigerians care about those terms? I think, you know, what they're talking about the old stock. It's about the old stock. You know, they, they still had the old stock before this reduction. But the NFPC would have factored all that in before they came up with this. They know that that is a trend, the trajectory, this period. Hmm. But they also do know that whenever an increase is announced, price hike, it reflects it immediately. It doesn't wait for the old stock. So what's good for the goose? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think another challenge also is the fact that if this is going to be coming monthly, hmm. this review, upward, downward, whatever the case may be, how do you, I mean, so you buy fuel for 125 this month and next month it has changed to 120 and it keeps changing like that. We need to ensure that this is really enforced because mm. I could just drive into a filling station and still buy it for 125, not knowing that it's changed to 120, perhaps because I'm not following the news as mm. much. So how will this work really needs to be fine-tuned so properly? Will DPR not be an essential duty to enforce this? <sighs> we'll find out. Well, we better find out. Uh, but, uh, of course, you see uh, those two pictures there on the front page. Uh, fumigation in, uh, at a local government in Plateau State by the council chairman of Langtang North Local Government Area. And right under that one, stranded motorists as a task force blocked the highway leading to Abuja yesterday. Of course, the breakdown of cases on the front page of the paper is also right there. Among other stories, you also find um, why UCHCMD others contracted coronavirus. You find that explained by health experts, among others. And of course, the Guardian back page has Sports Fury targets unification bout with Joshua, among other stories right there. We, we need someone to fight COVID-19 right now. So those skills might come in handy. Who, who will be the sparring partner for COVID-19? Well, maybe one of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, Daily Trust is the next one you've got here. COVID-19, status of 20 governors unknown. Three test positive, 13 negative. 39 ministers <clears throat> silent. It's a moral burden to declare lawyers, that's subscribed to lawyers now, mm. uh, CSOs react. So, 
What about the CSOs of those governors who are tested positive? Oh, are just they, uh, civil society organizations, but then chief uh, security officers. CSOs. I'm not talking about chief security, chief security officers. officers. Uh, I think standard well, practice is to test their contacts, Everyone, yes. Basically. Everyone in the media. Well, yeah, they have a right to keep it and declare or not declare. It's up to them, according to, I mean, the protocol, the medical guidelines. Uh, that much has been set and given by the, the NCDC, the Minister of Health, the Minister of Information, several people. But lawyers think it's a moral burden. But then they know the law is not about morals, is it? <laughs> well, of course, you know, lawyers will argue that there are certain moral considerations sometimes. Mm. You know, and then they have images of uh, some of those uh, governors on the front page here as well. And then, uh, look, speaking about all of those tests, uh, yeah, they need to do as much tests as possible. But I hope uh, if journalists can find, you know, make out time from their schedule, crazy schedule, and see if they can also uh, be tested, that, that won't be a bad idea. Because, uh, well, the thing about that is, they say, if you're not showing any symptom, don't exhaust those materials because we need it for the crucial people. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what if you're asymptomatic? That's really the, the headache here for a lot of people, Sincerely. honestly. <clears throat> it, it, it's, it's a big burden of, on, of this, this pandemic because you may, I mean, imagine having something and not even knowing it, but then, hey, we carry malaria parasites all over the place. So. Say what? <laughs> no, this is completely different. Don't let people use that as, as an excuse because they listen and say, oh, well, if that's the case, uh, this is different. We need well, this, to is, this, this, this needs to be, I think, you know, to a large extent, many people are not even taking this as seriously as it ought to. Which, uh, which we ought to move. also try and change. Yes, yes. Uh, and then this is the one you talk about, talked about. FG revises fuel pump price to 123 naira, 50 hour per liter. So when you do go out there, you need to see that fuel stations revert to this. So maybe that's why some of them don't bother opening shop because the, if the price keeps coming My down, business like they this. just feel, yeah, but look, that's, it is what it is. Yeah. Nobody will bring this kind of situation. Let's just hope that, COVID. yeah, you know, federal government through whatever agency is relevant, you know, has a way or finds a way to communicate uh, to the marketers mm -hmm. and all those people interested in the value chain because uh, involved in the value chain because it is a business for them so they need to make profit mm -hmm. so they need to make profit and those considerations ought to be made well yes indeed that is it with a look at some of the dailies but uh, how are Legosians, uh handling all of this well you do see some cars quite all right um, on the roads but um, yeah th there will always be questions about who is where what's happening to who and uh, yeah, there you go. There are questions as to who's observing this and who's not. Uh, I know. Or rather, who should observe and who doesn't have to? Well, everybody should, except if you're on essential duty. But now that uh, between the hours of 10 and 2, uh, markets will be open for you to go buy food stuff. How are you going to move around anyway? I saw uh, something flying around yesterday about uh, uh, mobile markets by mile 12 people. I don't know how far that is true. I'm thinking there might be new rules added to this because mm. things keep changing. And I'm looking forward to the PTF saying, you know what, we're hands on. So we'll keep changing with the time. No, that's the way it actually ought to be. It's not going to be easy, mm. but uh, they have to do what they have to do. We're back in a moment. Stay with us.